topic that's getting a lot of attention right now in the political world is women's health and reproductive rights. Yes, the topics have come up as part of the 2016 presidential election cycle. Joining us now is Kiera Johnson, a women's health expert and executive director of URGE, which stands for Unite for Reproductive and Gender Equity. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for, for allowing me to be. So, Kiera, the Supreme Court has announced that it will take up the first major abortion case in two decades. What's at stake for women here? Uh, yes, um, the Supreme Court will decide whether or not the policy that was um, uh, that happened in, in Texas is legal. And, and what this policy did was essentially create a policy where most of the clinics in Texas will have to close. Um, so we're, you know, we're sitting on pins and needles trying to figure out if this is going to be yet another barrier to women being able to access abortion services. We've seen in the news lately a shooting at a Planned Parenthood location in Colorado. How does something like that impact women who are relying on clinics for health care? Well, you know, uh, just in the last five years, there have been over 280 new restrictions on abortion quietly passed by politicians. Uh, that connected with the, the closures of clinics and, and real and perceived violence against women who, who are seeking them and the doctors who perform them, it, it, it only creates, you know, further uh, further barriers, right, um, making it that much more difficult for women to access services that they need and that they want. Um, and that's not happening just in one state or two states. We're seeing um, attacks on abortion across the United States. Okay, so there's a whole generation of young people who haven't experienced an America where abortion was illegal. What does the anniversary of Roe versus Wade mean in today's society? Unfortunately, the, the first barrier that, uh, that was enacted after Roe v. Wade came a, a short three years later uh, with the introduction of the Hyde Amendment, which made it uh, illegal for, for Medicaid to cover uh, abortion for low-income women. Since then, we have seen a number of policies enacted uh, that create barriers for women seeking abortion. So while abortion is legal on paper, Younger women, um, unfortunately, have to continue to, to experience real barriers um, day to day as they're trying to access reproductive health care. Um, one of the things that we're working on right now is we, we joined a campaign called All Above All, which is a campaign of 100 organizations working to restore and sustain abortion coverage for low-income women. And an unbelievable number of young people are standing in solidarity and working to fight on that. Good stuff. So little time. Where can our viewers go for more information about these issues? allaboveall.org to continue to find out what's going on with the campaign, urge.org to hear and engage with young people doing this work across the country, and I would also encourage people to contact their legislators about the Each Woman Act, which would essentially repeal the Hyde Amendment and ensure that low-income women have access to abortion coverage. Thank you so much for joining us today on Coffee with America. Thank you so much.